presence, bask in his glory. Where the spirit of the Lord is, it is impossible for nothing to happen. You are in his presence. Something positive will happen for you. Just bask in his presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the sweet aroma of your presence. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the destinies you are restoring. Thank you for the chains you are breaking up. Thank you for the sicknesses you are taking away. Father, thank you. Thank you for your presence, O oh God. Thank you for your presence, O oh God. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you for the sweet aroma of your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. There is none like him, none like him, none like him, none like him, none like him. The only drug that makes you high and doesn't have any adverse effects. Thank you for the spirit, the sweet spirit of God. Thank you, the chain breaker, the covenant keeper, the faithful one, the one who is able to right the wrongs. Anything that's been tampered with, whether through our carelessness or through the wickedness of others. In the presence of God, we ask for Lord for a turn around. Turn around and do my destinies. God ordained destinies, O oh God. Father, let your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brethren. You're welcome to the presence of the Almighty God. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, I'm going to be talking to us about basking in God's glory. Basking in his glory. And you had a taste of it. As many of you as keyed into the, into the worship. Praise the Lord. I'm, this one I'm going to be using a reader. I want to I want to make it as fast as possible because I know that there are a few scriptures to go through. Basking in His glory, it simply means. It simply means to to bask means to revel in and make the most of something pleasing. You know, like I said to you, focus just key in He's here. In, you know, get what you want from him because we are in his presence and his presence is awesome in our midst. Revel in and make the most of something pleasing. It's to sa savor or luxuriate in something. Just relax in it. Remind, imagine if you ran a bath with, you know, lovely bubbles, maybe with, um, what is this coming one now? I can see it, purple. Lavender. Lavender is very calming. And if you, you know, if you sit somewhere where the fragrance of lavender, you just feel very calm. It's a very calming aroma. To so luxuriate in it. You know, when you sit in a bath, you enjoy that time. In fact, you, sometimes you don't remember to get out until the water starts getting cold. If it's not a jacuzzi that is supplying you endless hot water. We will get there in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. The people that are having jacuzzi in their house who have two heads, eh? Praise the Lord. And another term I want us to, to define is the glory of God. Let's, I know I've worshipped God, but I just want to commit this time unto his hand. Lord, King of glory, I have no power of my own. There's no word in my mouth that I want to speak that can change anybody. But Lord, speak through me. You are the life-giving word. Speak through me today. As I open my mouth, oh God, let your grace flow through. Let your people be ministered to for, the, for a blessing upon their life. Let my speech be seasoned with salt. Let it minister grace to your children. Let none of us leave this place the same. Let us live better in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Another term we want to de define is glory. Glory means high renown or honor won by notable achievements. So if you've done, you know, something really great, 
maybe if Davido walks in here now, we all forget that we're Christians. The way we didn't praise God, we start screaming, hey, Davido in our midst. We're, it's like glory. We're not saying we're worshiping Davido, but the fact that he has earned that much, you know, popularity and success in his life, we're, we're worshiping. Even the ones that we don't know have done anything for us, just because they're in high position, when we see them, we start, we start shaking. But those are humans. That's the natural definition for glory. To, die, to fight and die for the glory in one's nation. Have you seen an athlete who is representing his country? An athlete who is really, comp that's why they make them sing the national anthem before they go. And then when you win a prize, the national anthem of your country is sung. They'll give, you know, you are the one who ran the race, but it is your country that received all that glory. So that is glory, something good, an accolade that is given unto you. But in terms of, in terms of um, God's kind of glory, the is to be immersed in it so that when I am seen, it is not to, to thy sin anymore, but the almighty God seen through me. Have you ever been through or have you ever known anyone? And these things can sometimes be in seasons. Known anyone such that it's like everything they touch turns to gold. Even when they make mistakes, it doesn't matter because you love them so much, the mistake just passes. Have you seen people go through, have you been through seasons like that in your life as well? Things just start falling into place and you look at yourself, ah, ah, is it not the same me I did to too? How is this happening? And you know that it's not you. It is God stepping up for you. Praise the Lord. It is the glory of God that can uproot you from where you are and place you where you never dreamt to be. And you are thinking, you feel like, they, what do they call it now? Something fraud. You, you are it's like, ah, ah. How did I get here? But you know that that's the glory, the glory of, God of God lifting you. you. The glory, the glory of, God of God is not something that, that, that you know, so, you know, yeah, so, there, there are many Bible, Bible examples where the glory of God is an event just happening like that. Like on the day of Pentecost, was the glory of God, the Holy Spirit came down like cloven tongues of fire on their heads. Um, the children of Israel, they actually saw the glory physically leading them in front and coming um, you know, behind them. When I talk about the glory of God, I talk about an atmosphere of miracles. You just experienced one yourself, and I hope you took advantage of it. Whenever God is present, it is impossible for nothing to happen. God doesn't come as a spectator. He comes to do something. So whenever you are in his presence, it's an opportunity for you to bask in that glory. It's an opportunity for you to tap from it. It's not every time give me, give me. Sometimes it's just, Lord, I just want to love you. Lord, I just appreciate the fact that you are here. And, and when you've done that, even God himself will turn and say, what do you want? I'm smiling because my sister-in-law is not here. When I, uh, when I saw her this morning, I went to her and I would say, oh, good morning. My and she would say, what do you want? This greeting this morning, what do you want? That's how we are in God's hands. You've not gone to specifically ask for anything, but you're just saying, Lord, I love you. By the time you finish your worship, God is happy. He says he rejoices over us with singing. He rejoices over us with dancing. He will just say, my daughter, what do you want? May we bask in his presence to the point that he gives us a blank check. Amen. What do you want? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To be immense in his glory, so that when I am seen, it is not me, but the God that I serve that is seen through me. The wave of God's glory is not just an euphoria, like something happens now. Sir, I'm not saying you play. How much is lottery this weekend? Hey, how much is it this weekend? Okay, let's say 100 million. You didn't play, but you pray. You just sort of won the lottery, 100 million. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, the kind of happiness, something good happened. As now won 5 nil yesterday, euphoria. I was happy for that time. Is that, those ones are temporary. Temporary. But when you bask in God's presence, it delivers something to you. You know, whatever God does, it abides forever. He delivers something to you and you know that you have received something from God that stays with you forever. Praise the Lord. So the wave, the wave of God's glory is more than just, oh, something good happened for me now. Yes, God creates miracles in our lives, but if he makes your life a blessing, not just that you are blessed, your life itself is a blessing. You are reveling in the glory of God every day. So it's not a once in a while occurrence. We want it to become a habit 
for us to bask in God's glory. Praise the Lord. We are in the season of a new wave of his glory. That's our theme for the month. It's not just some happy slogan that pastor came up with. It's something that I think it's Brother Emmanuel that always says that when pastor gives the theme of the month, he keys into it. That's what we need to do. He keys into it. And I don't know, somehow, the word I've been receiving all through the last week, the last two weeks, and anything I listen to. So I was, I was, I just pick up my phone, not that I intend to go and listen to somebody. Uh, our um, father in the Lord, uh, and then they said bishop now, <laughs> Pastor Lake Sanosi came up and he was praying about mercy. I think this one was just three days ago. I saw it yesterday. The same yesterday, I somebody was actually. Uh, insulting the geo because geo was praying for mercy over Nigeria and the person said oh stop praying for mercy is it God that is doing you know and I just thought what ignorance but that wasn't my point there my own point there was the prayer that Papa prayed was about mercy so maybe the glory of God in this season is his mercy in a way that we have not experienced before his mercy will deliver to you what your own handwork cannot deliver to you he will just look at you and say brother Franklin take my son, frankly, take. What do you want? What do you want? This is not about the makeup we put on or how well we do our hair. And people say, oh, you look so good. Even, even you look so good. If only is the phrase I'm looking for. If only they can see under the makeup. The how many issues you are actually dealing with that you come and that you turn up doesn't mean everything has happened but you get up and you turn up that's half the battle one you did not remain in bed saying this problem is too much is weighing me down you got up and you came that's half the battle one praise the lord let's read our passage so that we can see what the glory of god can do exodus chapter 34 Verses 29 to 35. Exodus 34, 29 to 35. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Exodus 34, 29 to 35. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel Behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron, and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him. And Moses talked with them, 32. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Amen. 35, the final verse. Okay. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. So before verse 29, before we started the text, Moses was going into God to receive the Ten Commandments. Well, Moses prayed a prayer and said, show me your glory. God said, ah, no man can see me like that and live. But come, I will show you my back. So he didn't even see God's face. God says, I will turn my back to you. He was talking to him, but he couldn't turn to him. And even with God's back towards Moses, Moses came out and the people saw the glory of God on him. You will have the contact, the kind of contact with God that when people see you, his glory will be shining all over you. Yeah. And as I was studying this, a song, I just realized what the songwriter was feeling when he sang this song. I don't know whether you can help me. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, 
in light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. I, I, I always wondered about the song, but as I was studying this, it then dropped that uh, uh, that is what the songwriter was thinking about. Immortal and invisible God. You dwell in light that is inaccessible, hid from our, our eyes. You are the most blessed and the most glorious, the ancient of days. If we look at the last verse, we won't sing it, I'll just read it out. Great Father of glory, pure Father of light, thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. Ha! All praise we would render, oh, help us to see. It's only the splendor of light that hides thee. He dwells in light that is inapproachable. The glory is so much. Our natural human form cannot, you know, God is spirit anyway. So in our natural form, we cannot contact him. We contact him by our spirit. He that cometh to God, no, not that one. Those that worship him. John chapter 4. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you. The same John chapter 4, I believe. He describes us as, and I'm trying to remember the scripture, he describes us as a, we are like wind. People see us. The, aha, the wind goes where it is dead. You hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You are supposed to be like that. All they will say is that this has to be God. Because your life will be inexplicably glorious in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So how do we experience that glory of God? Is it possible for a man to experience it? We just saw Moses was like us. In fact, Moses was a murderer. Did he not kill someone? The killing came before this experience of God. So if you've killed somebody in this house, uh, in this room, please, can you raise up your hand? Let me see. <laughs> You're on your own. Because there are people that are sworn to his majesty's government. If they see anything that is contrary, they have a responsibility to report. So if you've killed somebody, please raise your hand. We haven't gone that far. And we always think, oh, my sin is too weighty. Uh, seeing the glory of God is for people like Pastor Charles. Pastor Charles doesn't go to the toilet. He is so holy. <laughs> Pray, look at his face. Not even responding to me. Praise the Lord. It's for every single child of God. If only we we'll release ourselves to have that access. But most of the time we weigh ourselves down with, oh, God, it's not people like me they are talking about. You look at the next person, but no. But no. Let me even give you an example. Somebody like Isaiah. Isaiah, we've always known him as a prophet. Isaiah had been serving God. And then one day, he woke up. Ah, woe is me if I'm undone. I'm an unclean person. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell with, uh, in the midst of the people of unclean lips. Take the coal, cleanse my lips. Isaiah suddenly realized Oh, let me speak English. Realized. That was Nigeria coming out. Isaiah suddenly realized that this is what I need to do. I cannot enter as I am. All that I've been doing before is gymnastics. Lord, take the coal. Cleanse my lips. Here I am. We all have access to this glory. But how do we enter? How do we experience the glory of God? There's probably just one way, the easiest way, if you are in his presence. Before you can enter his presence, he says he won't behold any unclean thing. So you, you would have, you know, asked for forgiveness of your sins. He himself said we should come without wrath or doubt, lifting up holy hands. We should enter into the most holy place by the new and the living way, by the blood of Jesus. He says we should come without wrath or doubt. He says we should come. So that we can find grace to help in the time of our need. So he wants us to come. He sees exactly where we are. He knows what you did this morning, Sister D. He knows what you did last night, Sister Toy. But he's still saying, come. 
He is not stopping you. Only you can stop yourself. If you hear that other voice that is saying you, everybody wants to go and lift up all your hands, you. And it's the time when you want to pray, he will bog you down with all the things that you haven't done quite right. But God is saying, come. He's always 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 saying, come. May we hear his invitation and may we accept it and enter into his presence so that we can be blessed thereby. He calls us into his presence to bless us, not to waste our time. He calls us into his presence to bless us. Have you visited rich men before? Sometimes they have you sitting in the waiting room for a long time. You left your house hours before so that you won't be late for the appointment. You get there, you sit there, you won't get annoyed. Because you know what you are looking for. You will sit there. So why are we rushing out of God's presence? The one who even has the life of the rich man in his hand. The best way, or one of the ways we can, we can experience the glory of God, and God has already given us his own example, by spending time with him, glorifying him in praise and in worship. When praise goes up, the glory of the Lord comes down. When you fellowship with God, Psalm 100 tells us, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. By the time you do that, the doors are already flung open for you to enter. And then you experience God's glory. What you do there is between you and God. Some of us is, I want this, I want this, I want this. God is not angry. It's the stage you still are. You know when we have babies, they have no work than to wet their nappies. As soon as you change their nappies, mwah, mwah, you know what they want. You give them food. They don't talk to you. The most they can do to you is to smile at you. You can't tell them to go and wash plates. You can't tell them to go and do anything. But the minute they do, mwah, mwah, mwah. even if the mom is not within earshot, the minute that baby is crying, the mother knows my baby is crying somewhere. God did it as such. God did it as such. Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 12 to 14, sir. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 5, 12 to 14. 14, yeah, two verses. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Jetulman, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalters, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them an hundred and twenty priests. With trumpets. Thirteen, it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. That Praise the Lord, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, sir. Who was here on Friday night? When we sang that song, what happened? You, you remember? The song, we said the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Remember the song? I can't even remember the tune of the song, but when I saw this scripture, I said, this is, this is what happened on Friday. Now, Brother Joseph, do you remember the song? Because you made reference to it when you were ministering. You, I'm trying to remember as well, but... Mm -mm. We talked about the Lord's goodness and the fact that his mercy endures forever. But we don't need to remember, that is the scripture. The scripture is more important than the song. Praise the Lord. Go on, sir. For he is good, for mm -hmm. his mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord. 14. So that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Praise the Lord. So as if it's not that we have administrative structures, who would gladly have carried on with that praise and worship when we were praising God just now? I would gladly have carried on and I won't feel that I've missed anything if there was no word. The priest could not even minister because the glory of God had filled the whole temple. When we raise our voices in genuine praise and worship to God, his glory comes. And one thing I want you to hear and hear all over again, when his glory comes down, 
He didn't come to watch you. He came to bless you. So always, always, always take the opportunity and bask in his glory. Never run out of the presence of God. Run into his presence. Never run out. Never run out. Take as much time as you can in his presence. Praise the Lord. Another way we can experience God's glory is to ask for it. That's what happened to Moses. Moses said, show me your glory. He didn't even realize that his face was shining. God spoke to him with his back turned. And he came out from speaking to God. And people could not look at his face. Such that the light was blinding to them. That's why he had to wear a veil. We read that scripture. Every time he needed to go back, he would um, go back to God. He would remove the veil. But when he needs to come out to talk to the people, he would cover his face again. Because they could not. They were running away from the, the extent of the light. Praise the Lord. Exodus 33, verse 10 to 23. Please. Exodus 33, from verse 10 to 23. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped, every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Twelve. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. <laughs> Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider this, consider that this nation is thy people for thee. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that, that, in, in that thou goest with us? Yes. So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my side, and I know thee by name. Amen. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, <laughs> and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Moses prayed for, prayed for to see God's glory, and he was obliged. God, God was obliged to show him his glory. May we please God. I picked up a few things there. said, because you have found favor in my sight and because I know you by name. Does God know your name? Does God know your name? I know Psalm 60 verse 50, uh, Psalm 50, 15 says, call upon him in time of trouble and he will answer you. But is it only in time of trouble that you run? When you, get, when you run there, do they say, hello, who are you? Who are you looking for? Or do they say, oh, come in, Clement. Daddy has been expecting you. Are you a guest in heaven? Or are you even a regular visitor? Or in your spirit, that is where your spirit is. It says where your treasure is, there's where your heart will be also. Is your treasure in heaven? Or is it in the things that we're amassing here? Where's your heart? Praise the Lord. Another way we can contact God's glory is in our giving. A man had a dream. A man called um, Solomon, who later became king. The Bible says in, okay, let's read um, 1 Kings 3, 3 to 15. I'll read that, sir. 1 Kings 3, 3 to 15. And Solomon loved the Lord. I'm reading from the New King James Version. 
walking in the statues of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, and there was a and there was a that was a great and that was a great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings at the altar at Gibeon. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and the Lord asked, "What shall I give you?" Solomon experienced God's glory because of the huge sacrifice that he made. God was moved by that sacrifice. What shall I give you? And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made my serv your servant king instead of my father David, but I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to, ju to judge your people, can't see, to judge your people, to to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Brad Charles was teaching us this morning, and you know that woman who was caught in adultery, the Bible even makes record that she was caught in the very act. Even Jesus didn't judge her. Jesus just said, where are those your accusers? And she said, they've all gone. She said, I also do not accuse you. I also do not judge you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. So Solomon knew that it would be very difficult to be a judge over these numerous people of God. And the one thing he needed in order to do it right is wisdom. This speech pleased the Lord that Solomon has asked for this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked for this, and you have not asked for long life for yourself, nor asked for riches for yourself, nor asked for the life of your enemies, Lord. <laughs> oh my God. But have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall that anyone arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked. Both riches and honor. Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first his kingdom and then he will add everything else. Both riches and honor. So that there shall not anyone like you among the... There shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. He gave him everything. Then Solomon awoke. And indeed, it was a dream. So he offered a sacrifice, went to sleep as normal, and the glory of the Lord showed up. May the glory of the Lord show up for you. May he show up for you. May he recognize your sacrifice and show up for you in the name of Jesus. And if you thought, oh, it's just a dream, God wanted to prove to Solomon, it's not just a dream. Because the next thing, he had the opportunity to see whether he really had this wisdom or not. And we know the story. Solomon really showed the wisdom. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Another way we can contact his glory is that in our obedience to his instructions. There is none of them we can leave aside. You can't leave, you know, the prayer. You can't leave spending time in praise and worship. You can't leave the giving. You can't leave the obedience. He says he desires obedience more than even the sacrifice. So if you are bringing the fattest offering, but you're very disobedient, God, God says, no, I desire obedience more than sacrifice. He likens um, stubbornness to witchcraft and divination. So if you know that the word of God says this and you are doing the opposite, God is saying you are a witch. I'm not the one saying it. He says stubbornness is as iniquity. And, you know, I, I wish we could read that scripture. Is it 2 Samuel? Is it 1 Samuel? 2 Samuel 15. Uh -huh. Thank you. 1 Samuel 15. Please read it to us if you can find it. 
Yeah, so that it won't be that Tutu is making this thing up. He gave you 4 Samuel 15. You're asking for verse again. Look for, look for it. <laughs> Apologies, it's not in my notes, but 4 Samuel 15, you said? Um, there. And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity as idolatry. You might as well go and build one altar in your house and be worshipping whatever. If you decide to be disobedient. It says your stubbornness is like idolatry. We've heard it from the vo word of the Lord. So that nobody will say to, to call them a witch. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In obedience to his instructions, we will contact his glory. Sometimes it won't make sense at all. Can I say most of the time it doesn't. What did Saul do? They were waiting for somewhere. The animals were there for the sacrifice. Samuel, uh, Saul himself is anointed, is he not? Yes. We saw it in the Bible. Saul was anointed, but the instruction was, wait until Samuel comes. The people told him, it's the people, oh. Yes. Saul didn't yeah, decide to usurp authority himself, saying, ah, ah, is he only uh, Samuel that is anointed? Let me do it. It wasn't that spirit at all. The people told him, uh -uh, the animals are here. How can we keep waiting? Let's do the sacrifice. This to God. Did you sacrifice to another God? No. To God, but he disobeyed. He disobeyed. Praise the Lord. The instructions might not make sense. Your physical senses will be screaming against it. And that is to be expected. Because the, full, the, 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 the wisdom of God is foolishness. To the canal man. And sorry, I've been quoting that scripture wrong. It was when I was studying. I quote it as canal mind. Even though I tried to explain, explain it to myself. That the mind belongs to the man. So I'm still right. The things of God are foolishness to the canal. I always say mind. The Bible actually says man. The things of God are foolishness to the canal man. Are you a canal man? Do the things of God make sense to you? Or like you say this is stupidity? Because his instructions, the Bible says they are not grievous. But to you, they will look silly. Ah, look at all these water pots. Fill them with water. Even Mary said, whatever it says you should do, just do it. It looks stupid. They're looking for wine. You're asking them to go and be fetching water. He uses those foolish things to confound the wise. Those foolish things. He uses it to confound the wise. Why would it be Rahab, the harlot, in the whole of Jericho that will be preserved? The Bible didn't say Rahab. We don't know her surname. Or maybe they described her genealogy. But she is described more than once as Rahab the harlot. She is recognized as a harlot. But by a single act of obedience. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. By a single act of obedience, she experienced God's glory. God made a promise. The, the, the spies made a promise to her that when, Jericho is going to be dis, dis, uh, destroyed. But because of what you have done, you and all your household will be preserved. He told them, let them come into your house. You see that scarlet thread? That's the same blood of Jesus. Everything that comes under that covering is kept safe. So all her family that she gathered into her house, where that scarlet thread was hanging, were safe. Praise the Lord. Amen. He also says, if you are willing and obedient, 
you will eat the good of the land. In Jacob's time, Joshua's time, the money failed. The money has failed again. The money has failed again. Officially, they say the UK is in recession. Officially, the Naira has reached where, where we never thought it would reach. One pound will get you over 2,000 Naira. One pound that you throw anywhere in your house is 2,000 Naira that will feed somebody. The money has failed. Are you still relying on the money? There are some people that unmasked Naira and put it under their bed. That Naira is slowly becoming toilet paper. If this tide is not stemmed, the money will become useless. Because every day when they are waking up, the value of what they think they are hiding is going down. If you are obedient, are you willing? Are you obedient? He says you will eat the good of the land. And you know one thing about God? He would have seen this situation before the foundation of the world. And he still said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So that is money you can take to the bank. Sir, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. No matter what the economy of Great Britain is saying, the milk and honey that they said is here, you will eat it. You will enjoy it. I have been young and now I'm getting there. But I've never seen the righteous man forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. Your seed will not beg bread. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. While we were praying on Friday and we mentioned it. Sister Esther shouted from the back. Jesus economy. Is Jesus economy you need? The interest rate is crazy. Even if you keep money in the bank, it won't buy for you what it ought to, to buy. But it, even if it buys it and you are paying a ridiculous interest rate, do you want to starve because? But regardless of what the economy is saying, if it is time for you to buy your house, even in this rich economy, you will buy it. Even in this Tinumbu economy, if it is time for you to do great things in Nigeria, you will do it. In the name of that is what it means to work in God's economy because the money can fail. I'm sure many of us never thought we'll see ourselves in this situation again. It happened in the 80s, people lost their houses. That was the first time I wanted to come to England. My sister said, Don't come now. I had bought my ticket, she said, Don't she bought the ticket? She said, I waste my money, don't come now. It's too difficult, I can't let you come and suffer. I was working in a bank, so there was really no reason for me. I was just, I need to come, I need to come for other reasons. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But whatever the economy is saying, God has said, and his word cannot change. His word is forever settled in heaven. Before your parents formed you in your mother's womb, he knew what 2004 would be in terms of um, the UK economy. And he said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Brother Clement, you will eat the good of the land in the name of Jesus. I don't know why I'm staring at you. You will eat the good of the land. Amen. Amen. He gives us another formula. Please hold on to it, oh. Isaiah 1, 19 to 20. When something wants to bite hard. When rice was how much? You bought it. Whatever price rice is now, you will still buy it. You will eat what you want to eat, not just what is available in the name of Jesus. So hold on to Isaiah 1, 19 to 20, but there are prerequisites. Another one that has a prerequisite for you is Job 36, 11. If they will obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Somebody taught it to me as an equation several years ago, and that's how it stuck in my head. Obedience plus service is equal to prosperity and pleasure. If they will obey and serve him, 
They will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. God cannot turn back on his word. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It will not make sense to your natural body. My daughter Tammy describes faith as you are like an imbecile. It's like you have a cognitive dissonance. Something is not quite right. Because you're almost like a mad person. But remember, we're not doing it by... If it is God's word, period. The destruction of Jericho. I've never seen a foolish thing. Brother David, I've not forgotten you, but because of time, I'm trying to... Yeah. This destruction of Jericho, the instruction looks so foolish. If it were English speakers like some of us, I don't understand this nonsense. Just circling this wall unnecessarily, perambulating or parambulating like we call it in Nigeria. Perambulating like waist beads, just going round and round in circles. We're not even allowed to talk. For Christ's sake, what is this? It's all kinds of grammar. The instruction was... It feels ridiculous, doesn't it? Yes. And then it says on the seventh day, all the shouting that you have, you know, restrained yourself from shouting, shout it. And what God promised came to pass. Do you know that their minds could have negated that for them? Yes. It just needs, <laughs> my brother had a meme once. There's nothing as dangerous than a congregation of foolish people. If stupid people gather to do evil, be very afraid. Because they're walking. Even God recognized that in Genesis chapter 11. So pray that any gathering for you will be to bring good into your life. We won't read the story of Jericho because I just, Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 to 21 is quite lengthy. You can go and read it in your time. So by obedience, you will, can, you will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. And another one closely tied to it. To it. Before you can be obedient, you have to believe God. Yes. Faith. He is very clear. Hebrews eleven six. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you, you don't have faith. You don't believe him. What are you going to do in his presence? You won't even, will you even remember to pray? Because you don't believe that any God anywhere. The lady that I was saying was abusing the Jew. So it's not prayer we need. Is it prayer they used to build America? And they sound, she sounded very knowledgeable to herself. America wasn't built by prayer. The United Kingdom wasn't built by prayer. Holland and all the places that you people go wasn't built by prayer. Stop telling us to pray. And she sounded, she sounded, <laughs> I wasn't interested in that. Geo said, the prayer of Geo was, Ah, Lord, we're at fault. Lord, love mercy. I hadn't seen that on Friday. What did we say here? Lord, just your mercy. Whether it is my fault, whether it is my, the fault of my parents, whether it is the fault of my friends, whether it is the company I've kept, what I should do, what I didn't do, what I have done, let your mercy. Your mercy trumps judgment all the time. It triumphs over judgment. Let your mercy speak for me. And how can I trust God's mercy if I don't believe him? How can I trust that somebody will just say, I have mercy on you, and things will fall into place? I have to believe that the mercy of God will not only not deliver to me the punishment that I deserve, but also deliver to me the rewards that I do not deserve. The mercy of God will cause me to eat what I did not work for. That's a definition of miracle. One plus one is equal to two. You need it to be four. The mercy of God will make it four for you. God is ready for us. It's, it's, how much do you want to believe him? I remember my younger sister was getting married in Nigeria and she goes to winners. And you know winners, they do bulk wedding um many of mass wedding many of them will marry on the same day and our house and our reception ground was the nearest to Kena, uh, not Kenan land rajoba where they were using rajoba is right at the end of my parents street i can walk to winners chapel from my house 
and they announced the venue in church. All the people abandoned the people they came to wedding for. And thought, you know, <laughs> young people, this reception is closer. I don't even have to take transport. When, <laughs> when I saw them, I was a young believer and my mom was lamenting. Are we going to send people home with it? rice? Is no problem. Rice will cook in no time while they're still doing all the ceremony. Why meat? You first go and buy it, wash it, boil it. And I said, Lord, they were looking at me like, She's come again, Mrs. Fanatic. I said, Lord, you multiply five loaves of bread and two fishes. You can believe it. You can turn up your nose. Nobody went without meat. At the end of the day, we still had meat at home. Miracle of, I can't remember the year now. It was an August 17, my sister's wedding day. Praise the Lord. He says it clearly. You can't please him without faith. That's one of the scriptures that he repeats several times, word for word, in different places. When God starts to repeat himself, he really wants you to hear it. In Mark 9.23, he said, If you can believe, can you believe? Can you take him at his word? Because that's what we have now. Your money, I don't know how much I earn. My time is up. Uh, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay, okay, okay. I'll round it up now. Praise the Lord. I don't know how much you have stashed up. Oh, but I have God. That's all I have. He doesn't fail. He doesn't change. He doesn't tarnish. He doesn't go on holiday. He doesn't even look at, oh, this tutu girl, her character. Or, oh, she didn't bend down properly when she was worshipping me today. He doesn't look at all of that. His mercy. His mercy. His mercy. That's all I have to stand on at this time. And I will come out on the other end. I will come out on the other end. The children of Israel walked through as if they were walking on a motorway. Red Sea parted. The same God parted Jordan. If you thought Red Sea was a mistake. I will pass through. I will come through on the other side. I was talking to my youngest yesterday about studying. And she said, oh, mom, I'm bored right now. I said, you're bored. Hey. The only way to break through is to walk through. You will come out on the other side. I know that. But there's no shortcut. You have to face the storm. There's a proverb in my language. Oh, I can't go out today. Some people didn't come to church today because it was raining. Believe it or not. There's a proverb in my language that says, the lazy man will be calling for rain. Let it rain so that I won't need to go. If you have made up your mind to do it, God will take you through. By the time we got to church, I didn't see rain again. So if I had stayed at home because of rain, rain, the pastor has a thing. If I say, oh, pastor, it's snowing today. He will say, he will say it in Yoruba, but I will say it in English. One servant cannot disturb the other. In Russia, I call it He says it a lot. He says, I have told you. One servant cannot disturb the other. The God who sent them on assignment knows what assignment each needs to fulfill. Let rain and snow and whatever fulfill their own, you will fulfill your own. Praise the Lord. Can I have two more minutes and I'll just run this? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Before they sack me and kill the microphone in my hand. John eleven forty. I'll just read out now, brother David. Thank you for your help. John eleven forty. Jesus said to her, "Said I not unto thee, if thou would believe, thou should see the glory of God." You want to see the glory of God? Take him at his word. Take him at his word. I've said the story of Rahab the Harlot, so we leave it because she took she took the spies at their word. The final one, which is very important, and which is why I needed the two minutes. You have to be holy. You know, I was saying earlier, he's asking us to come, 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 come. But he has also said he will not behold iniquity. So you can't carry yourself with your iniquity and say you are strolling into his presence. What did Ananias and Sapphira do? One time judgment, B. It's a dangerous thing. To fall into the hands of the Almighty. You cannot kick against the gods. 
He says you must be holy. Pastor Charles always says that, oh, if he knew that we can't be holy, why would he say it? It's because he knows that he has put potential in us to be holy. But he has not taken away our will. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? Leviticus 20, 26, quickly. And you shall be holy unto me. For I, the Lord, am holy. And I've severed you from other people that ye may be mine. You cannot behave like the world is behaving. You cannot put your hand in iniquity. This is the way they are doing it. You cannot do it with them. Be separate unto God and then let that God make you suffer first. Are you willing to trust him at his word and leave man-made options? We can rise to our feet while I say the last one so that we can just pray. <laughs> Hebrews 12 and verse 14. Let it be Brother David's voice so that it won't be me. Hebrews 12 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. How many of you want to see God? You want to see God. Okay, there's a recipe for it. We want to see his glory, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 14. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Without what? Without which no man shall see the Lord. Hey, but without what? What are we? Without the holiness, we can't see God. It says no man. And that includes woman. Let's turn to the Almighty God just for one minute and just say, Lord, show me your glory. Everything I've heard today. Father, you know, open my heart to understand what has been said to me. Help my heart to receive it. Grant me the grace to start to walk in it. It's in the doing that I am blessed, not just in the hearing. If I hear, I'm just like a man who looks in the mirror and forget what it looks like. It is in the doing that the blessing is. Father, show me your glory. 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 Let me dwell in light that is in Let them see the glory of God on me. It will be difficult to harm me. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Father, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. I hope you are praying for yourself. You're not praying for me. Show me your glory. I prayed it while preparing. I'm still praying now. Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. In every area of my life. In my finances, show me your glory. In, the, in my parenting, show me your glory. In my matrimony, show me your glory. Father, in my workplace, in my career, Father, show me your glory. In everything that I am doing, in this local assembly, show me your glory. Show me your glory, Lord. Show me your glory. In everything I'm trusting you for, Father, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Your hand that can turn things around. Your hand that can turn, turn things around. Father, let me see your hand. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.